the starvation of a nation, Putin uses hunger as a weapon in Ukraine. The specter of the Holodomor famine of the 1930s is haunting Russia's war. Ninety years ago, Joseph Stalin's Soviet regime inflicted a devastating famine on Ukraine, killing 3.9 million people in what became known as the Holodomor, or genocide by hunger. Now Vladimir Putin, whose invasion has stalled on the battlefield, is trying to starve Ukraine into submission again. Russian troops have laid waste to farmland, destroying agricultural equipment and planting landmines in the rich soil where crops should grow. Ukraine's traditional supply routes have been wrecked, its ports now under Russian control. In the besieged city of Mariupol, where 170,000 people are still struggling to survive, food had virtually run out by March 13. Eight convoys have not made it through. The only interpretation is that, the Russians, want to create hunger and to use this method as a method of aggression, the EU's agriculture commissioner, Janusz Wojciechowski, said on March 23. It is similar method that was used in 1930s by Soviet regime against Ukrainian people. The attempted destruction of the food and agriculture sector in Ukraine, a land famed for its fertile black earth, is an emergency that has prompted a desperate scramble by aid agencies to deliver supplies and save lives. It is also a longer-term threat to European markets and the wider world. Some of the poorest nations in Africa and the Middle East face their own potential hunger crises in the months and years ahead, if vital imports from Ukraine run out. April is typically when Ukraine's supremely productive farmers start sowing the maize and sunflowers they will harvest in the summer. But their chances of a successful spring sowing season are severely jeopardized by critical shortages of key agricultural materials from fuel and fertilizers to seeds. There is also a growing shortage of workers, since huge numbers of male farmers have joined the army. Ukraine is appealing to Europe for help. In letter dated March 24, Roman Lyshenko, Ukraine's agriculture minister at the time, asked the EU urgently for billions of seeds to grow cabbages beetroot, carrots and tomatoes, as part of a package of humanitarian aid. The letter, seen by Politico, shows the scale of the shortages facing the Ukrainian people. It requests 210 million cucumber seeds, 400 million cabbage seeds and 50 billion onion seeds. Russia, Lyshenko wrote, is trying to weaponize mass hunger, like Stalin did in the 1930s. Many countries and international companies have joined forces to provide Ukraine with food and to prevent famine in Ukraine, which for the second time Russia is trying to inflict on Ukraine in our living memory, he said. Relief agencies and EU officials are racing to deliver supplies. The EU has pledged to finance Polish efforts to supply 50,000 tons of diesel per week to Ukrainian farmers. The World Food Programme, WFP has delivered humanitarian food supplies to the cities of Kharkiv and Sumy, according to an update the UN agency published Tuesday. It is scaling up bread distribution in Kharkiv and other cities, and has positioned almost 40,000 metric tons of food in key areas in Ukraine like Dnipro, as well as in neighboring countries. But no humanitarian convoys have yet reached the besieged city of Mariupol, where food has been running desperately short for weeks. The Red Cross was making another attempt on Friday. Ukraine is a country that's gone from breadbasket to breadlines, said the WFP's executive director David Beasley, in an interview with Politico. Reaching the 40 million people inside Ukraine is our gravest concern. If we don't reach them, obviously they starve to death. But aid deliveries won't suffice on their own, the country's business leaders say. Dmitro Loss a trade association chief and also an advisor to Ukraine's largest food company MHP, said, if somebody will think that they can solve this issue through humanitarian transportation to Ukraine, it's simply impossible. He is asking the EU for interest-free loans to keep 40 of Ukraine's largest agri-food companies afloat. According to the Ukrainian government, the amount of land that will be planted this spring could be slashed by more than half from 15 million hectares to around 6 million. The farming consultancy APK Inform has estimated the total planted area could drop by 35 percent compared with 2021. Russian troops have cut off animal feed supplies, 
leading to the death of three million chickens in the Kherson Oblast. No way out. Ukraine's ability to keep producing food this year will be crucial to ensuring its own citizens can continue to eat, but will also have an impact on the food security of the globe. Agri-food exports have all but halted from ports in the Black Sea, the route via which most goods leave the country. Only 15% of what used to be shipped can make it out by road or rail to the west. According to Roman Slaston, the general director of the Ukrainian Agribusiness Club, the EU is ready to set up green lanes to get Ukrainian exporters access to the Baltic Sea via Poland, EU farm chief Wojciechowski said this week, but the plans are unclear at this stage. There are reasons to believe Ukraine can avoid hunger deaths on the scale of the Holodomor. Ukraine's military has fought back hard against Russian forces, and its farm sector is doing the same. The country has built up strategic food stocks including a year's worth of wheat for making bread. Because it exports so much food, it produces huge amounts more than it consumes domestically. Despite the war, spring sowing has now begun in 20 regions of Ukraine. Yet nothing is certain, including whether the stocks will survive or the crops be harvested, as the war drags on. Foreign aid workers face huge ongoing risks, too. The greatest problem for Ukraine's food production may be longer term. It will likely take years for the country's farm sector to recover from the invasion, especially if its ability to trade remains compromised. Now is the period, a farmer, needs to go to the field and he needs to buy diesel, and he has no money because he cannot sell his grain, said Andriy Dykun, chairman of the Ukrainian Agrarian Council, a farmer's representatives group. The damage Russia is doing to Ukraine's farmland will have a long-lasting impact, too. Fields have been destroyed, or mined. Some are cluttered with abandoned Russian trucks and tanks. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, the Russians are doing everything to ruin our agricultural potential. Putin's aim, he said this week, is to provoke a food crisis, not only in Ukraine but in the world. Thank you for watching this video. If you like our content, please subscribe, like, and share our video. We appreciate your help. See you again.